On this episode of Artbeat, we continue our coverage of Frozen River Film Festival. First, we'll hear from Cy Dodson, director of Beneath the Ink. Beneath the Ink documents an Appalachian tattoo artist and his offer to remove obscene tattoos from former hate group members for no charge. Next, we'll hear from Nick Clausen, director of Wolf House. Wolf House tells the story of an artistically vibrant and unique home in Minneapolis and its recent sale. I'm Willard Hike, and you're listening to Artbeat here on KQAL. From painting to photography, from beadwork to woodworking, KQAL FM on the campus of Winona State University presents Artbeat. Artbeat highlights the work and accomplishments of local artists from in and around Winona. Support for Artbeat is made possible by the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund. I'm Willard Hike here at uh, Winona with Cy Dodson, director of Beneath the Ink over the phone. How are you doing, Cy? Good. How are you doing? Fantastic. Thanks so much for joining us over the phone. Uh, so to start, for listeners who might not be familiar, kind of give an overview, maybe a synopsis. What's Beneath the Ink all about? So Beneath the Ink was filmed in my hometown of St. Ohio, where I grew up. And um, I saw an article on social media that my hometown paper had written about Billy White and his uh, tattoo shop that was um, sort of challenging his community to bring in their mistakes, as he had put it. And um, that just, you know, when I read that, it, it um, kind of struck a note with me as, you know, growing up there, I know there's some hidden, you know, um, you know, racism that goes on there. And, I mean, it's not so hit when you live there, but outside looking in, you know, it's uh, definitely sort of an underbelly thing that's uh, happening there. So um, I just thought it would be a good opportunity to, uh, you know, sort of let let people know what, uh, what's going on there. Absolutely. So, so you mentioned this town featured in the film Zanesville. That's your hometown. Is that right? Yes. Was it... Was it weird at all, kind of being personally connected to the story in that way? Uh, you know, I think it probably helped more than hindered. Um, and people sort of opened up to me and trusted me more, mainly because I was from there, not some outside people that were just sort of coming in to pick a story and then move on and not really care about anything that happened afterwards. So, like, you know, I've been in touch with Billy the whole time from start to where we are now, and... Uh, He's been super inspired by everybody's comments and um, their feelings toward the film and what he's going to uh, make a difference in people's lives. I was, I was, I was watching the film at a screening earlier uh, th- th- this past weekend here at Frozen River, and something I was really curious about is th- this is quite a transformation for someone to go through for the, for the people that go to visit Billy. Did you get a sense of what gen- generally compelled people to you know, go and kind of change their ways in, in such a drastic measure? Well, I'm, it was, it happened so fast. It basically was shot in a day outside of a couple of interviews and a few other pickup shots. But the guts of it was one day at a tattoo shop on a Saturday. And Billy had some interest from people that were wanting to get cover-ups. And I told him, like, if you can, you know, gather a couple people to come in, I mean, when we're there filming, it would help things. So uh, uh, the people that came in were the only ones that I had the camera in front of. And um, they were just willing to talk about it. And uh, I didn't know what they were feeling or what they were thinking, but after I sort of uh, got to know their stories a little bit, it was sort of profound that, you know, what they're doing is they're trying to make their lives better. And that's really the whole gist of it is, you know, just using the thing to cover up their mistakes. Absolutely. Is, uh, you know, is, is, is it, does the offer still stand? Is he still doing this for free? Well, I mean, he said he was going to do it forever. Uh, but, you know, I think, like, when this all was going on, there was a couple articles written and there was, you know, just, like, awareness of what he was doing so people were coming in to do this. But it's also for free, so, you know, I'm not sure how many people would be there if it wasn't for free. 
So that's kind of the whole, like, you know, just the position of, like, are they doing this to, to really better themselves or are they doing it because it's free? But I think, you know, obviously they're in there for a reason, and, and that reason is for something good. Am I correct in understanding you said uh, film, filming took course over took place over the course of a day, is that right? Yeah. About how how long did the total production uh, process take, maybe let's say from, from concept to, 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 to release? I think I, sh I was in town for, in my hometown for another project, so I was kind of getting to these different aspects I needed to shoot for, you know, a few hours here and there, but I, I had a rough cut finish probably two weeks after I left and I imagine that's probably never going to happen again you know to have a film shot and edited in three weeks wow yeah and, and you know to have something profound like this is, uh, I mean I definitely don't don't take that for granted because my first two films took way longer and they weren't really I mean they, I mean they were fine but they didn't touch people's hearts that good um, I'm gonna I'm gonna ask you to brag a little bit here. Uh, the, the, it's it's been very well received by critics. It's it's been well received at festivals. It's won some awards. What what do you attribute that to? You know, I mean, I just say it's Billy. I mean, he's he's the story, and um, he really helped get all this finished in the amount of time that we had. Um, I I hired a guy to come in to help me. I didn't ever met him before, and he. Uh, he uh, brought a couple lenses and I had two cameras and we just kind of synced up and, and you know, it's just like we just need to do it this sort of way. This is how I see it happening. And and uh, John, who had the Klansman on his back, he, uh, he was a little reluctant at first. But I knew his backstory because of Billy. So if I knew, I knew if we got him that it would be interesting in itself. But just a little added... Uh, textured pieces that we got from the gal that came in to get the swastika. And the overall theme is just timely right now with how the world treating other people and who are just uh, caught up in different sides and different colors. And, and I think this is something that just is resonating with people right now. A little bit of a deeper question here. What's something you would hope audiences would take away from watching your film? People come up me after they see it and say things that are way more profound than I could ever say. <laughs> I mean, right, right. it's such a personal connection to like to watch somebody else's work and take something from it, rather than like, you know, I mean, I could say like, I want people to feel something, I want people to laugh, I want people to cry, and you know, I think you know when I was filming that, that was kind of what I was going for. It's like this round emotional ride that you know that you could take on as well. 12 minutes and, um, you know, and have a different uh, look on people that might be getting these great tattoos. Like, you know, we all come from somewhere and, you know, it's this judgmental thing that, you know, these people are like this for a reason and really it's just their upbringing and, and, uh, and I think it's just uh, a thought that, you know, we're all just human beings trying to get along so so now that the film's been released what's what's kind of what's next on your plate is it is it uh promoting beneath the ink is it on to the next project what are you up to now um you know i beneath the ink was just acquired by gq so it's live online right now uh, and uh, i have a couple more festivals going to big sky documentary festival uh, next week and that's a really great festival uh so I'm looking forward to watching some films there. Um, I'm curating a film festival at Four Daughters Winery on the eve of the Oscars, and then I uh, handpicked uh, quite a few films that I really liked along the way at this year's uh, festival run. And outside of that, um, I may be looking at doing another story back in my hometown. Sounds good. Well, Sai, thank you so much for joining us. All right, thank you. Now, here's Nick Clausen, director of Wolf House. I'm Leonard Hike here with Nick Clausen. 
uh, director of the Wolf House here at Frozen River Film Festival. How are you doing, Nick? I'm doing good. How are you? Awesome. Thanks for asking. So for listeners who might not be familiar, start by just kind of giving, you know, maybe a synopsis, a general overview of the film. Well, The Wolf House is a short documentary about a unique house in northeast Minneapolis. Uh, They call it The Wolf House. It's been known as The Hobbit House. Uh, It has many names, but um, it's a a journey of a um, living work of art, I guess, so to speak. For sure. So, so something I was talking to you about before we started rolling here is um, I'm from St. Louis Park. I'm from the area, and I was sort of familiar with the house, you know, before seeing the film. And it's so funny to kind of see it profiled in this in this documentary. What what got you? How how did this pop up on your radar? How how what inspired you to pursue this story? Well, in about 2015, there was a uh, TV news uh, TV show or a news show that. Um, talked about this house that went viral and and how um here's this crazy house that's up for sale and uh it's covered with rock and every square inch every wall is painted every ceiling is painted who's going to buy this house you know and uh, i remember reading about that and i kind of filed that in the back of my head and then later i decided to um to do a documentary about it yeah do you have any particular like brand or style of storytelling that you or or, yeah well uh i I come from the tv news background so i'm always kind of like who what where when why but starting off in the documentary world um is kind of freeing in some ways where you have an opportunity to tell a longer story uh you can tell it the way you want um you can have fun with it and this was kind of a uh, a way for me to have fun with a, a positive piece uh, that, uh, you know, was colorful. And, um, you know, it took me from Palm Springs or from Minneapolis to Palm Springs and back. Mm-hmm. Were there any unique challenges that this production specific presented? Yeah, one of the challenges I had was um, it was kind of overwhelming, the Wolf House. It was getting inside it. There was so much to see, you know, the rocks on, on the cupboards, the, uh, the murals, the floors, the ceilings, the bathroom. I mean, there was so much to film, and I, I, like, I was so, like, overwhelmed with how much I had to film that uh, I had to, like, take a day off and then come back and film later because it was just so overwhelming. That was probably one of the challenges I had. So what does it function as currently? Is it, is it kind of like a rental space for artists? Is that the right understanding? Yeah, Annette, the current owner, um, she, uh, it's called Bella Luna Studios, also known as the Wolf House, and she um, will allow artists to actually go in and, you know, someone could stay there for a couple nights and write some poetry, or, you know, they can, um, you know, work on a, a music piece, but she also has performances there, and I think you can, al- you can also rent it on uh, Airbnb. Was, was there a lot of collaboration that came along with this project, or is it was it kind of like a one-man show on your part how yeah well i did collaborate with um with uh some animators and they did the uh the graphics for me um i kind of do it all you know i I like to shoot i edit i direct i produce um but uh it was nice working with some other artists like annette and uh and flying down to palm springs to meet the artists and uh you know i'm trying to get better with uh letting other people in and and uh and to help me film and edit and, and things like that. Kind of having it all in your own hands, does that make it kind of more maybe efficient, kind of having all the, the creative direction in your hands? Would you say that? You know, I'm helping with, uh, you know, I collaborate with other people. You know, I'm helping uh, my friend Mark uh, work on his documentary. I'm going to edit that, his upcoming documentary. Um, so I collaborate with, with other people on their projects. Um, for me, um, you know, I have some projects that I haven't finished, and part of that is me, I don't know, being a perfectionist or whatever it is. But, um, yeah, if I can find people that I trust and I like, I think I, I'll be better at branching out and getting other people to work on my projects. <laughs> on, the, on the note of you, you mentioned you collaborated with uh, some, some animators in there. What, what inspired you to kind of pursue that style of credits? Because I thought it was, it was really unique and cool. Um, well, what was your thinking there? Yeah, I, I knew that the animators, their style was kind of um, cartoony in some ways is, is one way to describe it. But um, 
I knew that it was kind of such a quirky story that I wanted to um, kind of uh, have animation that kind of is quirky as well. And, uh, and that's kind of the style they had. So they, they worked in, in, in Minneapolis as well, and I kind of knew them, and, and uh, you know, they helped me out with the project, so it was great. Yeah. No, really cool uh, style. So tell me about your background. What, what, generally, what other kind of uh, work do you do? Uh, well, generally, um, you know, documentaries don't pay all the bills, uh, especially documentary shorts. But uh, I also do commercial work. I freelance. I do uh, television. Um, I do nonprofits, and and uh, I used to work in TV news, like I said, and and uh, and now I work work for myself, and it, it's actually allowed me to have more creative time to work on passion projects like documentaries that I that I really enjoy and and that you know gets my creative itch scratched yeah for sure so is it for now is it is it mainly just promoting wolf house or do you have more stuff on the horizon or, or kind of what what's on your plate currently currently um I have a couple documentaries in the works um and uh yeah I've been just kind of traveling regionally and and uh Palm Springs for the wolf house uh, and, uh, otherwise just, you know, uh, taking the winter off a little bit, uh, and just, uh, trying to make some money and, and, uh, finding some new, uh, some new documentary ideas. Sure. Nick, thanks for joining us. Thank you. Thanks again to Cy Dodson and Nick Clausen for joining us on this episode of Artbeat. For more information on Beneath the Ink, visit beneaththeinkfilm.com. For more information on Wolf House, visit the film's Facebook page. Streamable versions of today's show or any other episode of Artbeat can be found at kqal.org under the Media tab. I'm Willard Hike. Thanks for listening. Is art an important part of your life? Tune into Artbeat, Tuesdays at 1230, right here on 89.5 KQAL. Artbeat is made possible by a grant from the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund.